No, Ariel did not fall in love with Prince Eric. She did not. But what Ursula didn't account for was that she would fall in love with, Hello, all you beautiful people. I'm Miss Sally Pride. That's with three seasonal wives. I guess, why not? And this thing, I'm going to be talking about autistic themes in The Little Mermaid. And to be clear, I'm talking about the original movie of The Little Mermaid by Disney. I'm not talking about the new one. So let's just get that out of the way. So the film opens and we learn that Ariel doesn't really attend the concerts that often. Uh, and her father, Triton, is very upset with this. Ariel's not missing her rehearsals because she doesn't want to do it or she's lazy. No, she does it because she's having trouble keeping a schedule. And for a lot of autistic people, that can actually be a problem. When Triton sees Ariel, he calls her careless and reckless. Even though we already know that that's not the case. We know Ariel's not able to show up on time because she's having trouble keeping a schedule. And that there was an issue with a shark, which Triton isn't even concerned about. His own daughter, and he's not concerned about a shark attack? Now, what does this have to do with autism? So, a lot of people who are autistic have trouble keeping schedules. I'm not saying that Ariel's autistic, but there are many autistic parallels here. He has trouble keeping a schedule, and frankly, I think it's a bit concerning that Triton didn't acknowledge the shark attack, even though Ariel had already mentioned that. For a lot of neurotypicals, keeping a schedule is much more important than reasons why you can't keep a schedule. If Triton really cared, as he says he does, and I'm sure he might feel this way, help your daughter keep a schedule. You go after her and say she's not mature enough or anything. But yet when she tells you what's going on, you're not listening. And many times with us autistic people, when we try to explain stuff to other people, they just blame it on the autism and they don't actually see what the real problem is. Again, listen to autistic people. Actually, listen to people in general. Communication is highly undervalued in this society. And I'm saying that as an autistic person. Not to mention Trident doesn't like the idea of Ariel going up to the surface, which Granted, there is danger in doing that, but when you really think about it, he tells her, you can't do that, you're only 16. Uh, Triton? Yes! How old are you? Uh, well, the 16-year-old, yes, needs to mature a lot more. Honestly, the age comment really is sort of superfluous in this case, because it's like, you're eternal. When would be the right age? Arrow could have said, I'm 296, and Triton would say, you're too young to go up there. That's not why he doesn't want her to go up there. So remember, put that in proper context. And honestly, Triton should have been forward and been like, look, you know how dangerous it is up there. Things we're looking at can be found in this song, part of that world. I can't play it here, but I did make a short of me lip syncing to that if you want to see that. But in the song, Ariel talks about wanting to be a part of the humans, be a part of the culture, and learn about it. She says, Ask my questions and get some answers. That's pretty autistic. Just saying. See, for many of us autistic people, having a special interest is not just a, a hobby, as neurotypicals like to call it. It is a way of life for us. If we don't have it, it's gonna wreck us mentally. I'm serious. Being autistic, our special interests aren't just a hobby. There's something bigger than that for us. It's a way for us to stay sane and healthy. And yes, some of them can be dangerous. I know by doing this very video, I am putting myself in a dangerous situation by being a trans person. And just a lot of these can be dangerous. Like Greta Thunberg, who is autistic, she puts herself in harm's way for the causes that she believes in, which are true and right, that climate change is affecting this world in an irrevocable way. And if I keep talking about that, I'm going to go on a huge rant and probably cry and lose all the makeup. So I'm going to not do that right now. There's a misconception here that autistic people don't have any friends. Ariel is friends with Scuttle and with Flounder. She's friends with both of them. And what do they have in common? They both like talking to her about human stuff. I don't know if Ariel is in fact autistic, but she has a lot of the traits there and she really shows this off. Because remember, we can find community in many different ways. Neurotypicals tell us we can't have our special interests. It takes away our livelihood and our community. So don't do it. So Ariel follows the boat and doesn't really even think about what she's doing. It's just natural to her. And for many autistic people, that's just the case. Like, we get into a special interest and we're not even thinking about it. It's just 
we're unconsciously drawn toward. This is the pure essence of the allure of the escape she's talking about and part of that world. And Ariel's so desperate to get out there and see the world that she's forbidden from seeing that she goes to Ursula and gets her voice taken away. She gets her voice taken away and the only way to get it back is to kiss her true love within three days. And it's just not possible. I know a lot of people believe in love at first sight and all that, but let me tell you, that doesn't really make any sense to me. But then again, I am demisexual, so even Sebastian knows Ariel can't be happy in this situation, which makes a lot of sense, because we do the things we do to be happy and to have a better life, because we need to as autistic people. Also, I have to say this, especially given that it's an autism video, but speaking is different than talking. You can have a voice, but not speak. Just because you're not saying something out loud doesn't mean you don't have anything to say. You gotta pay attention. There are ways of communicating that are nonverbal. And I know that some can be a little bit confusing and scary, but just remember, you gotta figure this out. No one ever said communicating was easy. As an autistic person, I know that to be the case. So please, if there's someone in your life who isn't verbally speaking, take the time to get to know what they're trying to say, even if they're not saying it aloud. So Ariel's probably under the impression of, who needs a voice when you got a man? Am I right? Let's get another thing cleared up here. Kiss the Girl is a great song, but the message is really weird there. Just because you got butterflies in your stomach doesn't mean you're in love. It probably just means you ate some butterflies. Also, what's the thing about Disney and kissing girls who can't talk? It's like, you got Sleeping Beauty and now this? Wait, weren't they both underage? However, there's something Ursula didn't count on. No, Ariel did not fall in love with Prince Eric. She did not. But what Ursula didn't account for was that she would fall in love with humans. She already was in love with humans. Just now, it's clear. That's what the true love's kiss she was worried about. It wasn't about Prince Eric. Because frankly, Prince Eric is kind of a character anyway. I'm probably gonna have to believe that, won't I? Ursula's like a lot of neurotypical people. She underestimated autistic people. We need a fighting shot in this world, but we're not given one. What does Ursula do? She becomes a human and tries to trick Prince Eric. And also, it's Eric. Seriously? You go for another woman the next day? She has a different hair color! I mean, God. I mean, God, Prince Eric. She's a brunette. Can't tell it's between Ariel and Ursula. They have two different hair colors. I mean, what kind of man can't tell the difference between a redhead and a brunette? What the hell? And you know, since he's a man, he has to save the day in the end. And in the end, Triton says he's gonna miss her a lot. Even though nothing's changed. Seriously, in the real world, if an autistic kid ran away and broke the rules all this time, they would not be given the same level of respect and treatment. And that's just the unfortunate reality of things, is there is no way to win unless we use our voices. And remember, you don't have to speak to use your voice. If you're a neurotypical, pay attention to those who are not talking. Because just because they're not saying something, doesn't mean they don't have something to say. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, and if you want to see more, please subscribe. I've also included a link here so that you can see other videos about autism on my channel. Thank you. Goodbye.